During their emancipation, almost 3,000 slaves were freed from the Cameron Plantation of Stadville in their walk down the railroad track into a space of freedom. For the first time, black men and women and children placed their feet upon the freed land, which was called Bragtown. What we ended up seeing was a lot of people moving into public housing. We've interviewed several individuals who come from the Haiti community that actually moved into Oxford Manor. Um, we're building more information around that, but we see a common thread. We see that a lot of people um, find Bradtown to be a place to come after displacement from other communities. Coming from a slave plantation to where we are now, it has not been easy, but we uh, have taken everything that has come our way in stride. And I don't just speak for Bragtown, but I speak for every Black community that has been within Durham. So many have um, been displaced or lost communities now, but we're hoping that in the future that we can gain some of those communities back and hopefully have affordable housing where some of these people can be in these spaces in Durham. On Thaxton Avenue, which was um, part of the heart of the Brookstown community, that's the, that's the highway today, and it cuts right through and goes right up Thaxton. There you go. It wasn't just a house of worship. Certainly, that was its principal function. Right. But it was the community center. It was the meeting place. It was a place that helped to prepare the future generations of leaders. Uh, it was so important in so many different ways. And it is very disruptive when you pick up and move like that and you're forced to do it. The idea yeah. behind it was to remove the quote unquote blighted spaces, right? But mm -hmm. we have, as no fault of, of our own, really been put in a circumstance where we were poor people. Yeah. So we were living in what they described mm -hmm. as blighted communities. We loved each other in Brookstown. And if all neighborhoods could be like Brookstown, well, I mean, we are still Brookstown. We still have Brookstown in our hearts. Going back to the recreation center, uh, when it was an incinerator and they cleaned it up, the members of the community cleaned it up. And then they built this one room building that, that was the recreation center. There's that phrase kind of in, in black history, black culture, you know, making something out of nothing, um, mm -hmm. making a way out of no way. Um, and, <laughs> very much the legacy of Watertown speaks of that to me. Across the street from this house uh, on Onslow, there's a, a new home in the neighborhood that's uh, under contract for over a million dollars. So areas that are red line, and you'll see some of the other red uh, neighborhoods here are historically black neighborhoods um, in Durham, that those neighborhoods were, were given a red line to say that they were not gonna get investment. So you couldn't get um, the kind of bank loans, mortgages that other folks were receiving at the time. Uh, this is a, a property value change map looking at the Walltown neighborhood again. Walltown has been one of the hardest areas hit by the rise in property taxes. Uh, these neighborhoods are the ones being hit hardest by gentrification. As they do that, increase the property value, then people that live there, when their taxes go up, guess what? They can't afford it. You know, they're pushed out. That's one of the things that, um, you know, is happening.